from the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, Outdoor Oklahoma. Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. In terms of opportunity, there's never been a greater time to be a deer hunter in Oklahoma. Over the last two decades, nearly every regulation change has been to either liberalize seasons or increase opportunities. In fact, if your job and your family would allow it, you could deer hunt every single day for three and a half months. Think about it, that's more than a quarter of a year long. Over the same time period, the popularity of the use of tree stands has also increased. So it's no wonder that with more opportunities to hunt and the popularity of tree stands, that the risk of tree stand accidents would also increase. Today, we're going to hear a couple sobering reminders of just how quickly your life can change forever. What's your emergency? Yeah, I need an ambulance. My buddy's really hurt. Bad. He fell out of his tree stand. Okay, where are you located? I, I don't know. Somewhere north of County Highway 51. About a mile into the property. Okay, he fell from a tree stand? Yes, we're deer hunting. We were separated, and he didn't return to camp. I looked around and heard him yelling. He's not moving too well. Is he coherent? Yes. Yes, he's not moving too well. Okay, just stay on the phone. Help will be on the way. Okay, hurry. How's it going? Not What's good. your name? Gary. Gary, I'm Brian. All right. Where are you hurting at? Uh, my arm and my back. Okay. All right, we're gonna be putting a collar around your neck and a board underneath you, and then we'll head on down to the hospital, okay? some bumps here. Now we're going to lift you up in the air. Keep your hands right where they're at. One, two, three. Alright. You still hurting over here? Your shoulders? Your hips? Unfortunately, this very scene is played out all too often in woods across Oklahoma and the rest of the country, for that matter, every year. I hit the ground, a uh, tree stand come over my head, uh, the branch landed across my right leg down where the bone is down there. I started digging myself out from there because I wanted to get up, you know, because I really didn't know what was wrong until you know, I tried to stand up, and when I tried to stand up, there was a little sap in there that would cut for a shooting lane, and I used that as my crutch to get up on, but when I got to the very top, you know, when I stood up, that pain was just excruciating in there, so I went back down to the ground. I got to sit in there, and I, after I got the log off of me, I tried to stand up again. Couldn't do it, so I just sat down, you know, and then I started sweating, and then I'm going, man, you know, I might need to go in survival mode you know, because, you know, I'm starting to sweat. I didn't, I didn't know really what was wrong, you know. I had three breaks in my pelvis. I had one, my tailbone was broke. And I had nine broken ribs, but all of them, the breaks was all of them like a saw cut down where they could grow back together. You know, my ribs and, uh, you know, the other tracks. Uh, they put a pin in my tailbone to keep it solid and and to heal a little faster on that but and it's been uh that's november the 9th and it's i still probably got a couple more months to go i don't want nobody else to go through what i've gone through and you know because of the 
you know, it's it's just the time healing and the pain is so, it's, it's just so un, unbearable the first three or four days. I stayed in the hospital bed for four days uh, after I had my surgery that Tuesday until I got to put into physical therapy. And they don't mess around at physical therapy, man. It's, it's, they get you going and I was real lucky on this incident here. It could have been a lot worse and I could not even be here. You know, I've learned my lesson. I will never, you know, I will have that harness. I don't care if, if I got to add two together, you know, putting them up or whatever. I will have a harness on and I'm teaching my boys. They're going to start wearing harnesses too or they're not going to hunt with me. I think it's only human nature for us to assume that an accident would never actually happen to us. Well, this tree on this very location is a sobering and emotional reminder for me that an accident can happen to anyone at any time, and sometimes it can hit close to home. On a Tuesday in November of 2012, I got a chilling phone call that my very good friend John Cunningham, longtime game warden for us at the wildlife department, had fallen from this very tree and was being metaflighted to a hospital, and life as he knew it, would change forever. I thought I'd do my son a favor and go hang a deer stand for him that uh, we had picked out this tree previously on a scouting trip. So I knew exactly where he wanted to stand. I gathered up all, all the equipment and uh, traveled to this uh, property which was about 10 miles east of Guthrie and got out to, uh, to gather up all my stuff and go hang the stand and uh, opened up my toolbox and, and my utility belt wasn't in my toolbox. I usually carried it every time I went to hang a stand, I had it with me. So for some reason it wasn't there. So I gathered up all my stuff and walked in the half mile to the location where this tree was and assembled the, uh, the ladder and uh, strapped it to the tree, got it attached real firmly to the tree and uh, hooked a rope onto the uh, the stand, which was a hang-on type commercial stand, and uh, climbed the ladder to to a height that I wanted to hang the stand, which was about you know, 18 to 20 foot, and uh, pulled the stand up to me. And I remember I was straddling a pretty good sized limb where I could sit on this limb and, and work hands-free. And so I pulled the stand up to me and got the stand secured to the tree where it didn't have any wiggle or movement to it at all. I, I just stepped onto the stand and put my hand on the limb when something happened. And uh, I'm not sure at the time, I don't remember anything about from then on what happened. I, I don't remember ever hearing a noise or feeling anything or being scared or hot. Or, I don't remember anything. I just remember something happened. and. Uh, until I woke up on the ground. And um, uh, first thought when I woke up, I, all I could see was I was flat on my back and all I could see was limbs and blue sky and clouds. The first thought that went through my mind was, you know, I used to be up there and now I'm down here. How did I get here? And I thought, well, I must have fallen somehow. I didn't, at the time, didn't know how I got there. I just knew I'd fallen out of the tree somehow. In the process of feeling, you know, for wounds, uh, I'd felt my cell phone in my front, front right pocket, of my pants. You know, when I took it out, I remember specifically when I, when I unlocked it, I remember saying 123. And uh, it was kind of unusual because, you know, I, I wasn't in there in my mind that long. And because when I left the truck, it was noon. And I thought, I couldn't have been in here more you know, 20 minutes tops. So I, I figure I was probably out for, for a little over an hour maybe. And uh, my first thought wasn't to call 911, wasn't to call for any emergency. I, I called my son because I knew, he knew exactly the tree I was at. And, uh, but the only problem was he was in class at UCO. And I thought, he's not gonna answer the phone while he's in class. So I thought, well, if I keep calling over and over and over, he'll figure something's wrong and answer his phone. So I called, got his message, I hung up. Called, got his message, hung up. Did that four or five, I don't know how many times I did, but I did it a bunch. And usually when he answers, it's like, hey, or hello, you know. First thing he said was, what's wrong? And I said, well, Luke, I don't know what happened, but somehow I've fallen out of this tree out here where you were gonna put this stand. I was putting up 
I stand for you. Somehow I've fallen and I said, I'm hurt really bad. I said, so get me some help. And it, probably 30, 45 minutes later, I could hear sirens coming way in the background, just faintly, you know, they were just real low and then they'd get louder and louder. I could, could kind of gauge their progress by, you know, where they were and how loud they were getting. The first responders, when I got there, it was like, you know, they were assessing injuries and whatnot. And, they said, well, we're gonna to have to cut your clothes off so we can, you know, check and see how bad you are hurt. And, you know, at that point, you know, all, all modesty goes out the door. I mean, you're just saying, you do whatever you gotta to do to get me where you, ever I need to be. So they put me on the back of this four-wheeler and that ride from that location to the helicopter was just, it was, it was probably as much pain as I've ever been in my life. 15 broken ribs and six vertebrae in my back and uh, shoulder blade, collarbone. Uh, I had a punctured lung, that's the reason I couldn't holler out to the first responders. And I had some nerve damage in my, in my shoulder, and that's the reason my elbow was hurting so bad was from the nerve damage. But it, uh, I'd spent the next 18 days in uh, level one trauma unit at OU Medical and uh, got out the day after, Chris, or day after excuse me, Thanksgiving 2012. And uh, in uh, February 2013, I had nerve uh, transfer and nerve uh, surgery at uh, St. Louis Barnes U.S. Hospital in St. Louis, Missouri. So that's how we got to where we are today. You know, I've got some challenges that, uh, that um, have to learn to do things different, learn to uh, do just some mainly little things, you know, and, and uh, you know, I can't, you know, tie in my shoe or open a doorknob or uh, that type of thing, you know, it's just uh, buttoning my shirt, you know, things like that and I lost the use of my left hand. I have no feeling in my arm, uh, from my armpit to my, to my wrist on this underside, but I lost all function in my, in my left hand on my fingers. My hand, my wrist are fine, but my fingers, I lost the use of my fingers. So I have very little function in my left hand. I have no grip strength. I, you know, the little, the motor skills, uh, the button, the buttons, the tying the shoe, working a, a reel or trying to hang on to a rod, opening a doorknob, uh, going to, to a drive through and, and trying to hand her money or get something, you know, you gotta reach across. So the little things, you know, that you take for granted doing with your left hand, you know, those things I can't do and I uh, can't even pick up a cup. Uh, I have some finger movement now, but it's not of use to me the, the doctor has said you're gonna to have to treat this like you have a left hand amputation. Well, I've been, uh, been in law enforcement, I've been a game warden uh, for the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife for 31 years. And uh, because of the restrictions I'm gonna have on my hand, uh, the doctor will not release me to go back into law enforcement work of any kind. I'm gonna to have to retire effectively uh, here pretty quick. And, uh, and uh, I'm lucky I'm eligible for retirement. So uh, that's, that's not an issue, but it's, uh, it's cost me my career. You know, no doubt John's accident was life changing, but I'm certain that he'll be in the woods again this fall chasing another big buck. There are certain safety precautions that one can take to help reduce the risk of an accident. And when we come back, we're going to review some of those fundamentals right after this week's Outdoor News Report. Well, I'm here now with Lance Meek, our Hunter Education Coordinator at the Wildlife Department. And Lance, I'm sure you would agree, there is a short list of fundamentals that can help keep you safe while you're getting in and out of a tree stand. Yeah, you're right. And you know, the one thing I tell everybody is wear that full body harness. Wear it when you're climbing into, when you're setting in, when you're climbing out of, putting up or, or taking that tree stand back down. Anytime your feet leave the ground, you need to be wearing that full body harness. Exactly, good advice. Now let's go over some of those fundamentals of how to get safely in and out of a tree stand. Hunting from above gives the hunter advantages that you typically won't be able to enjoy from the ground. So it's very important that you always practice safety and wear a full body harness. But before you use a harness, make sure that all of the harness components are in good working condition. Check all of the latches and straps, as well as all of the stitching. The important thing to remember is to look it over completely to ensure that it's safe before you put it on. 
Before using your stand, check to see that it's properly strapped to the tree and that it's steady and sturdy. Once your safety harness is on, attach your bow to a haul line which should be positioned away from the base of the tree. Check to make sure your steps are secured to the tree or ensure that the ladder is still safely on solid level ground. Once in your stand, immediately attach your harness to the tree. This is a must and could be the difference between a safe, enjoyable hunt or a fall to the ground resulting in injury or even death. Next, pull up your bow using the haul line. Once you have your bow, Place the haul line safely away from you so that you don't get tangled up in it or trip. Finally, check your safe range of motion with your bow and make sure you're free of obstructions. You know, Lance, it's one thing for me to be safe while I'm hunting in my tree stand, but I'll be the first to admit that I've been negligent in the past of trying to remain safe while I'm putting up a tree stand for the first time. You know, Todd, you're not alone. I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with and you just don't think about it until you get out there and you're ready to put your stand up and you, well, how am I gonna stay connected? Um, so it's something that we should all endeavor to get better at. Absolutely. Why don't we take a look now at some fundamentals of how we would recommend to safely put up a tree stand. If you plan on hunting from a tree stand, Pre-season scouting is an important step to ensure a successful hunt. There are several things to keep in mind when selecting a tree for your tree stand. Select a live, straight tree that fits within the size limits in your tree stand's user manual. Be sure the tree is healthy and not dead or diseased. And never place a tree stand against a leaning tree, a tree that's wet or icy, or a utility pole. Once an ideal tree is selected, be sure to review the owner's manual and installation instructions. Always inspect your tree stand thoroughly before installation. Look for any wear in straps, bolts, cables and all other parts of the stand and any accessories. When installing a tree stand, always wear a full body harness that meets or exceeds the Tree Stand Manufacturer Association standards. Using a lineman's belt connected to the harness ensures that you're connected to the tree at all times during tree stand setup. If you were to fall, the harness and the lineman's belt will save you from potential injury. Climbing sticks are considered to be the best choice for entering a tree stand. Strap each section of the steps snug to the tree, ensuring the steps are firmly gripping the tree trunk. Next, wrap the lineman's belt around the tree and fasten it to your full body harness. As you continue affixing the climbing sticks to the tree, the belt will save you from potential falls to the ground. Continuing on, place the next section of the steps firmly onto the tree. As you climb higher, carefully slide the lineman's belt with you. It's important to clear away any branches or obstructions that may interfere with not only your lineman's belt and harness straps, but also with your stand. Once your desired height is reached, it's now time to affix your harness strap that will be fastened to your full body harness. The strap shown here works similar to a vehicle's seat belt device. There are also numerous Tree Stand Manufacturer Association approved ropes and straps that use the basic Prusik knot. Using a haul rope, carefully pull the tree stand up. It's important to have any excess rope or straps out of the way so that you or the stand won't get tangled up. Using a new ratchet strap or a chain, strap the tree stand firmly to the tree and be certain that it's snug.
The tree stand platform should always be at least 18 inches below your top step so that you step down onto the platform. With the lineman's belt unstrapped, you can now enter the stand. The tree strap that you connect to your harness should be placed right above you on the tree. Check the stand for any movement and be sure that you have a comfortable range of motion free of obstructions. When getting out of your stand, always keep your full body harness strapped to the tree. Once safely on firm ground, disconnect your safety strap and affix it onto the bottom step so it'll be ready next time for you to enter the stand. Well, we hope that you continue to enjoy all that Oklahoma's Outdoors has to offer. And above all, we hope that you do it safely. We'd invite you to also join in on our conservation conversation by hooking up with us on social media. For all of us at your wildlife department, I'm Todd Craighead, and we'll see you right here next time on Outdoor Oklahoma.